The mighty Adeptus Astarte are the Emperor's most prized military force. Prepare to fight and win against any of the enemies of the Imperium. These great warriors are most often witnessed slaughtering the foe on battlefields ranging from mechanical murder worlds, crawling with heretics, to fire-filled deserts, home to terrifying demons. But despite their affinity for ground assaults and their desire to meet the enemy eye to eye, the Space Marines are often attacked by cowards that prefer to wage naval battles in space. For these foolhardy foes, assaulting the main spaceships of the Space Marines, known as Battle Barges, seems to be more of a winnable encounter than meeting the Angels of Death in hand-to-hand -hand combat, or across a withering barrage of bolter fire. But this couldn't be further from the truth. A Space Marine Battle Barge, while not as fast or maneuverable as the light cruisers of the Imperial Navy, or as well equipped for long-range naval fights, is still a dangerous ship to pick a fight with. The most valuable asset, and what makes a Battle Barge so devastating, is its cargo. Hundreds of battle-hardened space marines stand ready to perform boarding actions and gut out the enemy ship from the inside out. First, let's understand that no two space marine battle barges are the same. The ironclad, legate, and warspites are only a few variants, and while many share similarities as their design comes from the ancient templates of the Great Crusade era, every space marine chapter obtained their battle barge during different points in imperial history, and so were built with slightly different accommodations. However, these ships have one goal above all else, planetary assault. When the Emperor of Mankind marched into the galaxy, ready to unify the scattered human empires, he commanded the tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus to build him the vessels that would transport his space marine legions into battle. As such, the Martian priesthood went about refitting battleships to fit the Emperor's standard. They modified the hulls of these ships to provide ample room for the Astarte legions and their armories. Knowing that these battle barges would be part of a grander expeditionary fleet, which meant that there would be a variety of spaceships that could fulfill the roles that the battle barges lacked, the design removed anything that prevented the ship from accommodating as many launch bays, mustard decks, and transport holes. They were created to house not only multiple chambers for the legionnaires, their servants, and slaves, but also possess large areas for training during longer voyages. Battle barges were meant to be large enough to fit gunship squadrons, intrasystem craft arrays, dozens of drop pods and living quarters, but also formidable enough to endure heavy fire and the perils of transit through the warp. The clever Magos architects and the master artificers who built the first battle barges knew full well that these vessels would suffer from terrible storms of violence, and in order to deliver its payload of space marines and attack craft, a battle barge needed to enter the planet's orbit without crashing and burning from the attacks of nearby ships and ground-based orbital defenses. The Martian tech priest understood that depending on the atmospheric and gravitational conditions, successful deployment may require the battle barge to enter a synchronous or low orbit hold, making it even more vulnerable to attack. To compound the problem, the sheer size of the vessel made it an easy target, and its low engine power to mass ratio made it unable to execute dynamic evasive maneuvers. A strong shield or armor had to be designed for each battle barge. Even when deployment was complete, battle barge was expected to remain defiant in orbit, an immovable object acting as a guardian over the space marine units below. In short, a battle barge had to absorb more fire and weather more damage in a single mission than most warships are capable of withstanding over the course of their service. The master artificers of the Adeptus Mechanicus answered this threat by constructing a virtually indestructible ship. The battle barge's skeletons were forged from ultra-dense alloy. These rare base minerals could only be mined from the sites of recent volcanic eruptions, and were further hardened by the compression tanks situated on high-gravity moons. The pressurized environment hardened the alloy, ensuring the superstructure was as solid as the doors protecting the Emperor's throne room itself. These inner frameworks were then girded in kilometers of hardened plasteel and adamantium, and edged with thick ferrocrete buttresses that surrounded the main hull like a reinforced ribcage. Finally, a second and alveolite layer of armor was added to each vessel's prow, forging an impenetrable figurehead. To further protect the battle barge's inner hulls, a sophisticated set of void shields were designed to layer across the outside of the ship. Wavering bands of energy that sparked around the vessel created a protective teardrop of visible force. These energy barriers were capable of absorbing or deflecting the worst of the stellar radiation and meteor showers, and could sustain a succession of weapon hits and explosive impacts before overloading. Because the Adeptus Mechanicus understood that once overloaded, the shield generator would have to be power cycled in order to allow the generator to vent off the excess energy, a process that not only would take a lot of time, but result in terrible slave and chapter surf casualties, the architects of these void shields segmented the entire energy field throughout the ship. 
In this way, it is possible for an area of a ship to fail without leaving the ship entirely exposed. Energy could be siphoned from one zone to another and redirected to where it was needed most. In dire situations, the shield's energy could be driven up past its normal maximum. This would temporarily provide the battle barge with great protection, but would soon burn out the generators and render the shields inert. Faced with overwhelming odds, some bold space marine captains would energize the entire battle barge and use the entire ship as a battering ram against other ships. This tactic would prove very effective, but would cause severe damage that often could not be repaired. The primary weapon of any battle barge was its dorsal mounted bombardment cannons. Each cannon comprised a series of heavy weighted batteries, huge turret mounted linear accelerators that launched a salvo of heavy magma bomb warheads. As the name suggests, bombardment cannons were primarily deployed to bombard planets from high orbit, a task at which it excelled. A battle barge will begin firing as soon as it reaches orbit, and will continue to rain destruction down on a planet even as its complement of space marines is hurled down in their assault craft, clearing a path for their deployment on the ground. Capable of obliterating almost any manner of planetary defenses, bombardment cannons will first be directed against a missile silo and laser towers, ensuring that the Space Marine Attack Force can proceed unmolested before being used to take command bunkers and shield generators, aiding their swift domination of the planet. On more than one occasion, a single salvo fired in a dense populated center has ended the conflict before gathering any real momentum. Shocking a world's leader into seeing the error of their ways, and quickly swearing fealty to the Emperor once more. After the Horus Heresy, when the Space Marine Legions were split apart by the Codex Astarte, the Battle Barge saw some minor modifications. Each Space Marine chapter was given anywhere between two to four Battle Barges, as each one could accommodate three full companies. The only exception to this were the Crusading chapters, that often had a larger Battle Barge variant, or would have to fit the typical chambers that a chapter would have in a fortress monastery onto multiple Battle Barges. This included a Great Hall, which is a massive chamber often found at the core of the battle barge. It's lined with statues of heroes of the chapter, and its walls were painted with frescoes that would show bloody battles and scenes of ancient heroism. In the center of the chamber, the chapter's symbol would often dominate the floor, easily 100 meters across. The Great Hall was used not only to display the glory and the power of the chapter, but it also was large enough for multiple companies to assemble. Space Marines of the chapter would sometimes gather there in the presence of their ancestors before deploying into a mission or a campaign. Another very important chamber in the Battle Barge is the Apothecarion. In this pristine white chamber is where the Apothecary safeguarded the chapter's genetic heritage and tended to the injured Space Marines. It is rare for a Space Marine to suffer lingering damage from combat. Most wounds are not strong enough to kill a Battle Brother, either healing quickly or being overcome by some auxiliary organ. By the time the Space Marine has returned to the Battle Barge, any such damage would have healed or had been patched up in the field by the Apothecaries. The Apothecarion therefore usually dealt with only those Space Marines who required new organs or limbs, or cycle surgery for extensive mental trauma. Far more important than the tending to of wounded Battle Brothers, the Apothecarion serves as the repository for the chapter's gene seed. Filled with ancient tomes and sacred scrolls is the Battle Barge's librarius. Every piece of text ever laid down by the chapter or relevant to its existence is housed within the chamber. Overseen by the librarians, it is a silent and holy place of only whispered secrets and hidden truths. Few Battle Brothers are permitted access to the librarians, its reserves of knowledge restricted to the chapter master and his advisors. And then there's the center shrine known as the Reclusium. The Reclusium is greatly revered as a sacred place for the chapter's Battle Brothers. It contains precious relics drawn from the chapter's history. It has fragments of armor from fallen champions of the chapter, blessed weaponry that has drunk from the blood of the heretic, the Xeno, and the demon, and captured banners and shattered icons of defeated foes. Space Marines come to the Reclusium to meditate or pray to the Primarch and the Emperor. Chaplains are charged with overseeing this sacred chamber of the Battle Barge. There are many other chambers that are often customized by the chapter to fit their unique culture and needs. Battle Barge are as much prized relics as they are warships. They are icons of strength and endurance that echoes the might of the Space Marines. The resources required to build them anew are difficult to come by. The loss of even a single one of these vessels would not only be a great blow to the military capabilities of a chapter, but it would also damage its morale, robbing it a part of its proud warrior history.
After reading this lore, I see the Battle Barge less as a tank in space and more like a Space Marine RV. Like its main point is to transport Space Marines from one location to the other and basically support them while they're invading a planet. They're not really uh, meant to go to ship to ship battle type of situations. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll be down there in the comment section talking to you guys. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. And I will talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>